Hi there, this is Adam Lane from Pocketnow.com and this is our full review of the Samsung Galaxy S3 for AT&T. If you haven't already, be sure to check out all of our other Galaxy S3 coverage in our Galaxy S3 playlist. Now this time, we've got the Pebble Blue version. Let's check it out. Galaxy S3 is one of the most anticipated smartphones of the year, and if you add the blazing fast speeds of AT&T's new LTE network, you're in for a good ride. Let's start with the specs. The Samsung Galaxy S3 ships with Android 4.04 and does a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 1.5 GHz dual core CPU with 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of onboard storage with a micro SD slot for expansion. The front camera can take photos at 1.9 megapixels and video at 720p, while the rear camera is an 8 megapixel shooter with a flash and can record full 1080p video at 30 frames per second. The Super AMOLED Pentile display is 4.8 inches at 1280 by 720 resolution, making for a DPI of 305. The phone is quad band UMTS with LTE support on AT&T. You also get Wi-Fi, BGN, Bluetooth 4.0, AGPS, digital compass, and NFC. The phone is 133 grams and only 8.6 millimeters thick. To power it all, you've got a 2100 milliamp per hour battery. Let's take a closer look at the hardware. The design of the Galaxy S3 is the most unique I've seen from Samsung in recent years. This is the Pebble Blue version, and we are very impressed with its beauty. There's no more weird lip on the back as there was with the Galaxy S2, and the plastic feels much more high quality. At the top, you've got the handset speaker, along with some sensors, a 1.9 megapixel front-facing camera, and an LED light that alerts you to certain notifications, which can be customized in the settings. Then you've got a massive 4.8 inch screen with a very thin bezel, and at the bottom is a hardware-based home button flanked by capacitive back and menu buttons that kind of disappear into the body when the backlights are off. On the right side is a small sliver of a power button, on the bottom, you'll see the microphone hole and a micro USB port. On the left side is a thin volume toggle button. On the top is the 3.5 millimeter headset jack and a thin slot that you can use to pry the battery cover off. On the back is the eight megapixel camera with a single LED flash and speaker. After prying off the back, you can see the 2100 milliamp per hour battery as well as the micro SD slot and SIM card slot. The battery cover plastic is very bendable. One problem with the beautifully designed hardware is that its glossy plastic is very sensitive to fingerprints and also very slippery. In the hand, the Galaxy S3 is not as ergonomic as it could be. The thinness makes it more difficult to hold since there's less surface area on the edges for your thumb and fingers to generate a stable grip. As is the case with all phones that have large screens, trying to reach the upper areas of the screen is an exercise in frustration if you only have one free hand to interact with the device. The most comfortable way to use this device is to hold it flat in the palm of your hand, letting gravity keep it there while interacting with it using your other hand. In the pocket, however, the Galaxy S3's thinness is quite advantageous since it does not cause too much bulk at all. Now let's talk about the software. One of the first things I did was create a better looking wallpaper image since most of the others were unimpressive. Though there are some interesting live wallpapers included. There's one that animates news stories in the wallpaper background and one that shows stock quotes. We like the one that shows photos from the photo gallery, but we dislike that we have to manually select a hundred of them and it crops most images in the worst ways possible. The default widgets aren't terribly attractive either. The weather clock widget has a goofy lens flare in the corner that doesn't even come from the sun shown in the same graphic. We've also got a few other default widgets on the other home screens that some might consider bloatware, though others might find them useful. The exception is the Flipboard widget, which we like a lot. The Flipboard app is quite a good looking way to flip through news stories. By default, there are numerous seemingly superfluous apps included that are sure to confuse some users. For example, there's apps called Messages, Messaging, and Messenger in the app tray. There's also Chat On and Talk, which are a couple more messaging apps. And the Talk app lets you do pretty much the same thing as the Messenger app with the same people. Then you've got Play Music and Music Player, which share similar functions. And in the same vein, you've got Play Movies and TV, which has functions that overlap the Video Player app. 
It's fun trying to remember all the differences though. Samson has also included a secondary video store called the Media Hub that duplicates functions of the Play Movies and TV app, but sometimes gives you different prices in case you want to bargain shop. S-Memo is a decent note-taking and drawing app that also supports voice recording and syncs with your Samson account. As suggests, it's just another way of discovering apps. All it does is link you to the Google Play Store to download apps that Samson decides to feature. Then there's S-Voice, which is a nice attempt at adding a new speech interface to the Galaxy S3, but it falls short of being uh, terribly useful. The deal breaker for us is the fact that it won't read incoming text messages. You can send text messages without looking at the phone, sure, but when someone replies, you have to pick it up and read it yourself. In terms of interesting customizations, Samsung has added quite a few features, many of which might never catch on and do not have any usability advantage whatsoever. For example, the one where you hold a finger on the lock screen for a couple seconds while holding your phone up and then you rotate it to launch the camera. That's way too convoluted. The one where you simply find a contact and then hold the phone up to your ear to dial without pressing a dial button is actually very cool. That brings us to the keyboard. Just like Brandon and Michael, I found this autocorrect feature to be horribly frustrating. You'll want to install a better keyboard like Swipe or SwiftKey. Next, let's look at the camera. The Galaxy S3 is able to use its LED light for autofocus assist, which is important for getting sharp photos in low light. Unfortunately, the AF assist feature makes for a significant increase in shutter lag, since it doesn't attempt to focus until after you press the shutter button, unless you touch the screen to set a focus point first. In that case, the light will come on for focusing, and then it'll shut off without taking a picture. But then pressing the shutter button will be faster. Not having a dedicated camera button for half press focusing and full press shutter makes this process more difficult and more likely to miss the shot, though for still objects it works well. Low light shots tend to be well exposed, however the amount of noise is very high. Outdoors, the camera is quite good and boasts some fun optional shooting modes and a lag free shutter. While we love the idea of the panoramic shooting mode, Samson's implementation doesn't work well at all. Seams and duplicate shapes are far too frequent compared to HTC's panoramic shooting mode, for example. Be sure to look at our full review on pocketnow.com for full resolution sample photos from the Galaxy S3. In terms of battery life, we found the Galaxy S3 to be quite good. We could easily last all day and we're getting around 20 hours worth of normal usage. LTE speeds on AT&T's network were phenomenal if coverage is available. In terms of pricing and availability, you can now buy the Galaxy S3 from AT&T for $199 with a two-year contract and qualifying rate plan. Many of our annoyances are software related and thus can be fixed by the developer community. So if you're a power user who likes to install different ROMs, try out all sorts of hacks and do some heavy customizing, you're sure to like this phone. Our final rating is four out of five stars. The Galaxy S3 is a great device for Android fans who want the latest hardware with lots of room to grow. Be sure to check out our Galaxy S3 playlist on YouTube for much more coverage and comparisons on this device. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and thanks for watching.